Now, the first thing to know about Romans is that it is no different than any other book of the Bible in the respect that it is but one part of a much larger whole. Romans is not a Bible unto itself. It is not a self-contained, systematic theology that Paul created. Romans is only truly intelligible when we have the rest of the Bible to provide the foundation and the texture for what Paul has to say. And, and I can't say this strongly enough. We must always evaluate what Paul is teaching in light of what Christ taught. Especially, we must be careful that Paul's thoughts always uphold what the Tanakh, the Old Testament, taught. Those words of the prophets couldn't be more important. If Paul in any way refutes Christ or the prophets, then what we have is but a mere man, Paul, providing a little more than air-filled personal theology that only has value as interesting Jewish literature from that era, and it would be anything but divinely inspired. You know... <laughs> The reason I even say that is because it's not uncommon around here for me to quote Yeshua from the Gospels, explain the application and the principles that it exposes, only later to have somebody approach me and say, well, yes, but Paul said... Folks, I want to say this as plainly as I can. Paul and Christ are in no way on equal footing. If Paul and Christ seem to disagree, the fault's with Paul. We can't have a gospel of Christ, but then turn around and say, Paul has the power to overwrite it, remake it with his own inspired thoughts. then it's not a gospel of Christ, it's a gospel of Paul. And although the average churchgoer doesn't realize it, inside the hallowed halls of our Christian institutions, long ago, doctrinal decisions were made that pitted Paul against Christ. And the winner was predetermined to be Paul. And this is because there were ways to spin Paul's statements that made him appear to agree with the Gentile church authorities. Now, on the other hand, if I truly thought that Paul disagreed on any theological point of consequence over and against Yeshua, we wouldn't even be studying his most famous letter, the book of Romans. I'd be telling you to avoid it. What we're going to see in Romans is Paul working out a very sticky cultural and theological problem. The participation of Gentiles within the early community of Jewish believers that as of that time still operated strictly as a sect of Judaism. In fact, so much of Shaul's dialogue is about or is aimed directly towards Gentile believers that some commentators think that the book of Romans was written strictly to and for Gentiles. And this belief, very popular in the early Gentile-dominated church, is what propelled the viewpoint that the book of Romans ought to be the primary source of doctrine for the new religion called Christianity, a religion that's offered only to Gentiles. To this day, the bulk of Christian commentators, again, all Gentile, of course, refer to the book of Romans as Hellenistic literature. See, Hellenism refers to the lifestyle and the culture practiced by the Gentile Greeks and Romans. This was the dominant and the desired culture of the Roman Empire. By thinking 
of the book of Romans as Hellenistic literature, then we necessarily discard the Jewishness of its author, the Jewishness of its context, the Jewishness of its theology, and the Jewishness of its meaning and message. In truth, the book of Romans is thoroughly Jewish literature that even employs rather standard debate and defense principles and terminology used by the sages and the rabbis in the Talmud. Yeah, the oldest extant manuscripts of this book, Romans, is written in Greek. But this shouldn't be troubling. Greek was the most universally spoken language in the Roman Empire. Paul was a diaspora Jew. His first language was Greek. The Jews, believing or not, in Rome, to whom this letter was written, would have spoken Greek. But nevertheless, all the history, theology, the scripture passages, the thought patterns that Paul was transmitting were purely Hebrew in origin. It's only that these Hebrew thoughts were necessarily being transmitted in the Greek language. Now let's remember who Paul was. Although a diaspora Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, he identified with mainstream Judaism. Let's call it rabbinic Judaism just to give it a clearer picture. We don't have to conjecture in any way about Paul in this regard. He calls himself a Pharisee. His training at Gamaliel's school is a recorded fact. When his training was complete, he did not graduate as a novice or an intern, but rather as one having mastered the philosophy and nuances of this particular strand of Judaism. Paul was a rabbi through and through. 